So before we talk about whether or not print is dead or dying, let's quickly define print media. So in the context of this thesis, we're not looking at print in terms of um, publishing books, magazines, and newspapers. This is not about journalism or editorial publishing in that sense. Instead, this is focused on marketing and communications. So every extension um, of a brand, uh, from the business card to the poster, to packaging, to a billboard, brand literature, in-store displays, the list goes on. So is print facing extinction in branding and marketing? How many people in here think in five years print will disappear completely and will be dead in, in marketing and branding? Uh, how about in 10 years? Okay, one. Wow, this is going to be an easy argument. Um, no, this is exactly what I found in my research. Uh, this is exactly what I found in my research, is that most people, leaders in the industry, do not see print as disappearing. There's a lot of excitement about digital media. Hansa has highlighted for us the incredible benefits of social. And we could talk for ages about how pervasive and ubiquitous digital is in the fabric of our lives. But print is, um, while it's diminishing and shrinking, print is not dead, guys. It's sticking around. Three weeks ago, uh, the WPP reported 12.2% growth since the second quarter in 2009. A good friend of the Berlin School, our CEO, Sorel, attributed this growth to the bite back of traditional media. My hypothesis <clears throat> is uh, that print media will continue to add value to and will maintain distinct competitive advantages in integrated brand building. So print has distinct benefits as a part of integrated marketing efforts. This is a complex topic because it's future focused. By the very nature of the topic, methodology for this research was difficult to design. It was determined that ethnography, unless you are Sudir or unless you are unemployed, uh, was not feasible. And as Doug has you know, underscored for us time and time again, surveying via the internet, unless you have a large budget, is inherently biased by a single party. My research model was a three-pronged approach, primarily qualitative research, which consisted of 42 interviews. Each interview was an hour and a half long, and all participants got the same 13 questions. I'll tell you about the sampling in a second. Desktop research was a lit review, both online and offline sources, looking at branding, marketing strategies, um, technology, media consumption patterns, and getting context and insight into all of those areas. And lastly, I did a micro case study. Um, I use that, that, that word cautiously, but I did a case study of a major multinational corporation. PricewaterhouseCoopers, where I've been working in-house for the last five years, over the last three years has gone through rebrand. And in changing its logo and visual identity, I studied carefully what was the use of different media in that strategy and what leadership had to say about the role of print in the future of the brand. In comparing qualitative desktop and this case study research, I looked for synergies, overlaps, and tried to highlight and get insights into the potential of print and its specific advantages in the future. Let's talk quickly about brand building. Branding is, is no longer a, a one-way conversation with consumers, and it hasn't been for a long time. There are some sort of key mantras that were repeated by my interviewees. I've outlined them here on this slide. Branding is something that is evolving and uh, leaders in the field are adapting to meet users 
um, as media consumption habits change and evolve quickly. So, at the heart of brand building is, is the creative idea. And, and there's, there's this idea by Tom Davenport that attention is the new currency. Um, some people say time is the new currency. It's about engaging people and building loyalty. Still, that hasn't changed. These are digital and traditional touch points of a brand. And different combinations work for different audiences in different industries. But core to this is fluency among all of them. Brands need to be able to adapt to where users are, and users are everywhere. The multimedia leader at PwC says that people are, quote, curators of their own experience. So of all of those touch points, people selectively choose and engage in different ways, and brands need to be fluent and meet people across all of them. Integration is uh, kind of a buzzword. It's become a bit of jargon in the marketing industry. Um, I think some people in the digital agency world are a little bit turned off by this term, but I think that it still holds great value. It's difficult to achieve, but some, some brands have done it quite well. The idea is that there's a multiplier effect using different media that together they are better and create a macro effect. Print offers eight distinct benefits in integrated brand building. These benefits arose out of my research from looking at successful campaigns, from looking at successful brands and the tools that those brands use, and from the testimonies of the people that I interviewed, these were the areas of greatest overlap. And these are what will propel print uh, into the future, keep it relevant, and keep it valuable. I'm going to go through all eight of them. The first one, print is disruptive. In a crowded, busy, saturated digital universe, Marty Neumeyer argues that, quote, today's real competition doesn't come from competitors, but comes from the clutter of the marketplace. Print cuts through complexity and engages people as a take-your-time medium. There's value in that. Uh, additionally, print engages people in longer-form content in a way that digital media cannot. Print ignites action and response. Either the printed card, the poster, the catalog, or the coupon. Print gets people to do something, go somewhere, or find something online. Print uh, has keepsake value. It is covetable. As an object, it has intrinsic value because it's tangible, it's portable, it's permanent, and people want to own things. Uh, anthropologists believe that when our basic human needs have been met for survival, um, the instinct of ownership kicks in. This will not change. This is something that's timeless. People define themselves on what they own and what they covet. Um, so print has the advantage of being something that people hold on to and engaging audiences for longer time rather than a fleeting moment like in digital media. Print is and can be personal. It can be more personal than digital media, principally because it facilitates the hand-to-hand -hand transfer of objects of beauty. There are just certain business tools and certain business resources that just simply work better in print. They are core to fostering relationships and developing new business. Print is becoming increasingly responsible media choice. The carbon footprint of digital media 
e-waste and energy use is massive. Um, you have to read my thesis to get more detail on that. But print is um, actually incredibly green and in some cases more responsible than digital media, which goes against sort of common perceptions. Print is local. Print reaches people when they are offline. This uh, HSBC campaign has been running for a long time. There's a reason that it's still running in corridors when you're getting on and off airplanes. People don't have their laptops in front of them. They are waiting in line. They've got their luggage. And they're captured and captivated by compelling creative like this. Sudhir brought up the issue of trust and media. I would also ask that same question. What media is most trustworthy? Do you trust content online? Do you trust content in printed form more? Many people believe that print has a tradition and a legacy that gives it just inherently more trust than digital media. There's just simply a perception that if it's worth printing, it's been vetted, fact-checked, researched, an editor has approved it and chosen it, so print has greater validity, authority, reliability. Packaging is the largest and fastest growing sector of the printing industry. Um, goods need to be distributed, they need to be protected, and they need to stand out from other goods in the marketplace. Print is now 40% of packaging. As packaging gets more intelligent, gets more sustainable, eliminates plastics and a lot of extra waste, print is the medium that allows brands to engage people communicate information about a product or service and be a vital extension of the brand. It, print can also communicate um, luxury, excellence in quality, and, and just supremeness in the market. So those are the eight key competitive advantages of print. Um, it's important to say that all of those are dependent on other media. So. No one is saying that print is at the core of a marketing strategy. Digital is not a channel that we allot a budget to. Digital is a part of society in our lives, but print plays a strong role in that. Quickly, looking at the case study that I did on PwC, as PwC changed their brand, um, we're talking about a company with 163,000 employees in 151 countries. We tried to eliminate waste, we tried to cut away clutter and be more green, we tried to eliminate print from many extensions of the brand. And what we heard from global leaders around the world was that they couldn't get rid of print. Print was necessary um, in day-to-day -day operations, in, um, in staying relevant in the market, in serving their clients, and in developing new business. The uh, Helsinki Institute of Information Technology did a fascinating study about information technology. And what they found was that digital technology is trying to be what print already is. Print is human focused. It is ubiquitous in our lives so much that it's invisible. Um, and that's what digital is trying to be. Print is already there. And you don't really notice that until you take it away from people. And that's what the study found. Very interesting. There are many new opportunities for print as um, effectiveness increases and as new ideas emerge. Let's look at some of them. So quickly, this effort here where people could check in at billboards via mobile and the social networking app Foursquare Every time that people saw the billboard and checked in at that location, $10 went to a social cause. $50,000 were raised in San Francisco using this billboarding and mobile app technique. Facebook is a company that connects people online, right? But when Facebook wanted to thank its key advertising clients, what did it use? Print. How? A limited edition poster, it's a beautiful poster by the way, rolled up in this tube and a $75 donation to a charitable organization. There was a customized redemption code and URL on that little round circular disk. So people could go online, plug in the code, 
and donate to a cause of their choice. Facebook donated $300,000 and thanked their key clients with this gift. Puma worked with Fuse Project and the industrial designer Yves Bahar to redesign their packaging. Print was the medium of choice. They eliminated their 65% of their packaging in what they called the clever little bag. The Obama campaign is perhaps the best example of wide-scale, holistic, integrated marketing in the last few years. All media was activated in this campaign and print was a, a central and driving force in that. Print was something that became viral. Consumers and users, audiences contributed to the campaign with their own artwork, their own transfer, displaying it in fashion, store windows, homes, etc. When IKEA wanted to present um, a campaign for their new kitchen appliance line, um, instead of a traditional marketing campaign, they created a book about baking. Beautiful photography of ingredients laid out on these, these cool colored backgrounds and a mobile app which allowed people to monitor how much weight they were losing based on the baked goods in the book. The person online who lost the most weight um, using this app got a free IKEA kitchen. Every blog and creative journal has written about this campaign. The real impact has been in the sort of viral publicity that it got. Brand books are something that Eric Spiekerman, one of my interviewees, highlighted as having a huge comeback. Uniqlo, Muji, BMW, Carhartt, Louis Vuitton, Prada, all of these brands are creating brand books that tell the story of their brand and create an object of beauty and they can often be bought. You can't buy this one, unfortunately, because it's, it's quite beautiful. Um, Blurb for Good. Blurb is a, is a self-publishing, hybrid publishing site online. You can publish content digitally or create beautiful photography books. Um, this is an effort to raise money for global charitable initiatives and issues. This is an instance where print and digital truly integrated um, in the physical sense. In order to find out the end of the story of this ad, you have to place your iPod on the printed page and press play. And there's a payoff at the end with a tutorial about the app, and you can download the app for free. It was advertising an app for an insurance company. Google, ubiquitous online, everywhere. Everyone knows Google. Google ads, right? Everyone wants to advertise through Google. How does Google advertise? They use print. They couldn't get enough exposure on their site, on other sites, about Google Places. Those little pins on Google Places created a nice pattern for the backdrop here. This is Shibuya Station in Tokyo, Japan. Wide exposure. Print brings massive awareness. This is a Beijing Olympic ticket. Our RFID technology, radio frequency wave, was embedded in this ticket. 16 million tickets were printed at the Beijing Olympics and people were prevented from counterfeiting tickets. They could scan the ticket and actually get a photo and a passport number of each individual who had a ticket to the Beijing Olympics. Quite scary. Here's a cool little integration of print and uh, digital. I kind of want one of these. I haven't got it yet. But this is from Moleskin. It's about, it's about how we use media, you know? And, and the key is that we, we use media in a synergistic way. This is uh, IBM's Smarter Planet campaign. Print plays a specific role in launching large campaigns, usually at the beginning. These printed ads in the top left ran in the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, New York Times, every Monday, every week for a series of months. And uh, this campaign is just a great example of wide-scale integration as well. Print has a specific advantage in communicating large directional shifts for organizations. IBM was sort of moving from hardware and software into consulting. And they use print in the environment, print in place print ads. There's also color changing billboards on the top right, which are pretty cool. Here's a hologram using augmented reality um, webcams in a business card. So you can um, see this young designer's Twitter account. You could link to him online and you can hear him talking if you hold his business card up to a webcam. And this is perhaps my favorite example. The company IDO was 
received a grant from received a, a grant from the Gate Foundation to help sustainable development in developing nations. They used print in book format and in the format of field tools and journals to to help um, innovations in developing nations. These, this system and this process has led to solutions that's advanced and enhanced the lives of millions of people. So a few quotes at the end from some of my interviewees. Eric Speakerman is someone who's making a lot of money doing brand books for large companies. He believes that magazines will shrink in quantity. There'll be less magazines, but magazines are here for the long haul. Uh, Paul Soon is a digital expert for JWT in Asia. Asia's massively growing. Um, you can see by his quote that connectivity in the digital sense is key, but so is distribution and traditional media plays a part in that. John Hunt, any media that can go against the grain, especially print, has a valuable role to play in the future of branding. And this is interesting, I think it was just last week, that Newsweek and the Daily Beast merged. Tina Brown has edited also the New Yorker and Vanity Fair. She's been editing the Daily Beast online. She's returning now to print with this uh, merger with Newsweek. And she says that she's looking back at print now with new eyes and a very different point of view. And she's very optimistic. She says that she's one who never wrote off the value of print. So, sort of in closing here, my thesis, you should all read it, argues that print is being reconsidered, repositioned, and reinvented. Key to this reinvention is complementary integration with digital media, and additionally, innovations in quality. Print quality must get better. Print must get more sustainable, more green, and ultimately more effective in the sense of integration. Thank you very much.